Good morning. Good morning. Great to be with you today. If uh, one of the ushers could turn on the balcony lights. Looks like I forgot to get those. Thank you. And let's take a moment to uh, greet everybody around you, please. This morning we're wrapping up uh, just a short three-week series on what Jesus wants his church to be. He wants it to be a place where we belong because we're welcomed and we're prayed for there. And today we'll hear Jesus wants his church to be a place where we are shepherded. So we've got a lot of sheep going on in our lessons and in our, our hymns today. Let's start with our opening hymn, Jesus, Shepherd of the Sheep. Think of our own baptism as we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. The congregation may kneel. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless worry and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. In peace, let us pray to the Lord for the well-being of all people everywhere, 
that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you. Hear our prayer, O Christ. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, Lord of life, live in us, that we may live for you. Amen. You're welcome to stay standing for our song of praise. Pick it up as, as we go along. There's uh, the verses have the same melody each time, so I think you'll be able to sing along pretty well by the end of it. I 
sing your praise within your house forever. Within your house Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the good shepherd who laid down your life for the sheep. Lead us now to the still waters of your life-giving word that we may abide in your Father's house forevermore. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. My family forward for the baptism. Shane, you mind introducing everybody? Congratulations. Yeah. All right. You know that Lord Jesus commanded us, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You want to obey that command, but you're also trusting Jesus to still be Jesus, and to still love the little children. Remember how the disciples tried to keep the children away? And Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. It is in baptism that God promises to, to put his name and the power of his word and his promise into this water that I got from the sink in the back and to turn it into a water of forgiveness and joy and peace even for the little children. This promise is for you and your children, St. Peter says in Acts chapter 2. By the power of God's name and word, this is a water of life to take away sin, to deliver from death and the devil, and to give eternal salvation to all who believe. All right. Receive the sign of the cross on the head and heart to mark you as a redeemed child of Christ. True it, William Shane, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has forgiven all your sins. By your baptism, you are born again and made a dear child of your Father in heaven. May God strengthen you to live in the grace of your baptism all the days of your life. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord commands us not just go and make disciples baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, but then he says also teaching teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And so Christian love urges all of us, especially parents and sponsors, to assist in whatever manner possible so that Truett would remain a child of God his whole life long. If you are willing to carry out this responsibility, then answer, yes, as God gives me strength. Yes, as God gives me strength. And let us pray. Dear Father of mercy, Father in heaven, we thank you for loving our little children. 
even more than we do. We thank you for the blessing of baptism by which you give even to the littlest ones forgiveness and life and salvation and you make them part of your family. We pray that you would help all of us to think about our baptism every day of our life, to put it on like a robe of righteousness that we wear through all things. And we ask that you would look with special favor on Truett and grant him a rich measure of your spirit that he may grow in faith and in a godly life. Make all of us willing to carry out our responsibilities to those who have been baptized so that we all may finally come to the blessed joys of heaven through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Garden Home. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Let's continue with the baptism hymn, Born in Cry. First lesson from Isaiah chapter 40. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See. His reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is God's word. Amen. Amen. We read responsively the 23rd Psalm. 
The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He leads me beside quiet waters. He guides me along the right paths. Even though I walk, I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, you prepare a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. Surely your goodness and love will follow me. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Our second lesson from 1 Peter chapter 5. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. This is God's word. Amen. Amen. Please stand out of respect for our Savior Jesus. Our sermon is based on only one verse today from the gospel according to Mark chapter 6. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the sermon hymn. Let me point out to you a few things in, the, in your program today. Uh, first of all, there's a sermon notes sheet that might help you follow along with the sermon if you're a visual note-taking kind of person. Uh, that's in the program today. And then also there's a connection card in, in your program. We ask that you would take the pen that you were given and uh, fill that out for us, especially your name and your email and uh, in the box here, first time guest, etc. On the back of the card, you're going to see that uh, we believe God isn't done with you just because the sermon is done or the service is done this morning. He has next steps for you to take on those right paths as he leads you as your shepherd. And so you have some ideas here. You've got a spot for giving us your prayer requests, etc. Fill that out. We're not going to be collecting it till after the sermon, uh, but that is there. Let's join in our sermon hymn, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need, after a brief instrumental introduction.
My dear Garden Homes family. Psalms, it's only one verse. Let's read it again so it's fresh in our minds. Mark 6, verse 34. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Imagine trying to wear every sweater and sweatshirt and jacket that you have all at the same time. Just trying to put them all on. You think you could even do it? I'm not sure that that I I could. <laughs> After a while, it'd be hard to get your arms into the sleeves. Uh, it'd be hard even to move <laughs> your arms, much less button things or get them over your head. How do you think that would feel, though, <laughs> if you managed to get most of your sweaters and sweatshirts and jackets on all at the same time? Uh, kind of claustrophobic, <laughs> kind of trapped, kind of warm, <laughs> kind of uncomfortable, kind of tired. Do you think you could? Take them off again? Probably need somebody to help. Pull them over your head. Get your arms out. And, and after all that, what would it take you? 45 minutes? Hour and a half? If God has blessed you with that many sweaters and sweatshirts and jackets? Imagine wearing all that for like three days straight. It's like the you know when you were little and your mom or dad dressed you to go out in the snow and... Right? And you'd be like that for three days straight. You could hardly get anything done. But as, as bad as that would be, you know, if you weighed all of those jackets and sweaters and sweatshirts, maybe 15, 20, 25 pounds, that is nothing compared to five years of wool. We think about sheep without a shepherd. Well, they're going to die. Well, amazingly enough, sometimes the sheep doesn't die. A sheep without a shepherd can survive, even has been known to survive as long as five years. But they aren't going to be in very good shape after that. I'd like to show you a brief video about a sheep that was lost for five years and what they had to do to try and rescue it. Here we go.
He could hardly see. He was needy. He was filthy. And, and to get him cleaned up took three or four different people a whole hour. And they were flipping the sheep over this way and that, snipping and shaving. And in the in that fleece, 80 pounds of it, they found branches and twigs and all kinds of other debris. Do you imagine if there wasn't just one barrack? <laughs> If you had hundreds or thousands of sheep like that that you had to take care of, that would take you a month, wouldn't it? <laughs> Unless you were Jesus. In our verse from Mark chapter 6, Jesus sees a crowd of 5,000 people and he says all of them were like Barak. They were like sheep without a shepherd. And he is able to help all of them all at once. And are we having trouble back there? Okay, we're good. I see people looking back there. It means that I know something's going on because they're not looking at me. <laughs> Jesus is able to help all these shepherdless sheep at one time in one afternoon just by opening his mouth and teaching them because that's how great Jesus' teachings are. Jesus' teachings can grab hold of your soul like the people grabbed hold of that sheep and flip your soul this way and that and upside down every which way to find all the crusted on, matted down, filthy chunks of wool that should have been shaved off a long time ago and snip, 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 snip them away, all those parts of yourself that are making it hard for you to walk straight or see straight that are burdening you down. And, and Jesus has many teachings like that. He started to teach the people many things. His teachings are so powerful, they, they can apply to, to most anyone. Here's this crowd, 50 times bigger than our crowd here today. And Jesus had just what every one of them needed. His teachings came out and started snipping away from their souls. Now we ask ourselves, why were the people in this crowd in such bad shape? Why were they like sheep without a shepherd? Whose fault was it? And just in that little verse, we have a, a strong condemnation of the preachers of Jesus' day. Because these thousands of people, they went to the synagogue every Saturday, but the preaching they were hearing there wasn't leading them to repentance. It wasn't helping them. It wasn't meeting their needs. The, the preachers of Jesus' day were guilty of a wholesale spiritual neglect. And that's why Jesus' teaching was so needed. That's why Jesus' teaching was so refreshing. But on the other hand, just because the preachers weren't doing their jobs very prayerfully, or faithfully, doesn't mean God had stopped speaking. Every time, just like in our services, even if the sermon stinks, at least you get to hear the readings. Right? You get to hear God speak still. And that's how it was in Jesus' time. Moses and the prophets were read every Sabbath. And Jesus himself, as he was growing up, he went to the same kind of synagogues with the same kind of mostly empty preaching that all his Jewish neighbors went to. But Jesus cared so much about his father's word that he, he tried to get everything he could out of those synagogue services. Little boy Jesus, right? He, he would think, well, I heard what... The, the scripture said, and now what does the preacher say? Oh, does that go together? A little boy Jesus would take God's word that he heard in the synagogue and to, into his heart, and he would take it home with him, and he would pray over the things that he had heard, and he would try to live them out. Little boy Jesus cared so much about God's word that he tried to get everything he could out of those synagogue services until you know this story. He's 12 years old, and he's in the temple in Jerusalem, and the smartest Bible guys in all the land are amazed at this 12-year-old boy's understanding. And he got that understanding going to the same church services <laughs> that left everybody else like sheep without a shepherd. Because we cannot blame 
all of our straying on our preachers. Each of us, like sheep, has gone astray. We've gone our own way, Isaiah chapter 53 says. And someday we're going to stand before the judge and and he's not going to take our excuses for our wandering or our straying. If we try to say, you know, Lord, I wouldn't have strayed so far if the pastor's sermons wouldn't have been so stinking boring. That's not going to fly with him any more than it's going to fly with the judge when the preachers start making excuses. We don't have to guess how serious that is to the Lord. He talks about it often enough in the Bible. It's going to be a frightful thing when when the Lord says to the unfaithful preachers, you lazy, selfish men. And it was the straying sheep who needed you the most. Why don't you go after them? Why don't you lead them back? May God have mercy on this preacher right here. For all the times that I failed my sheep, or all the times I opened my mouth to preach, and my sheep's needs and and, and fears and troubles weren't foremost in my mind. God have mercy on me for all the times when I, I didn't even care. Because I know that I have not lived up to the Lord's expectations for his church. And that must be a very serious thing to him because in his compassion, our Savior Jesus, oh, it's, it's an urgent desire of his that his church be shepherded and not neglected. This is the kind of thing that we've been talking about now in in our little sermon series. We're wrapping it up today for three weeks about what Jesus wants his church to be, what Jesus wants to do for you through his church. That that church, as, as your sermon notes sheet says, church isn't something you go to. It's a family you belong to. And, and, and what does that mean? Why do we feel like we belong in Jesus' church? Two weeks ago we talked about because church is a place where we're welcomed. Welcomed like, like that little child Jesus welcomed into his arms or, or like the outsider whom Jesus took in and called his own. And then last week we talked about how church is, is supposed to be a place where you were prayed for. Where the people around are praying for you with, with big enough prayers to cover even your sorrows that are as dark and, and heavy as the sorrows of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And now today we see Jesus, he wants his church to be someplace where you are shepherded. Even if you are so far gone astray that you're walking around like Barak the sheep carrying 80 pounds for five years of wool. You can hardly see straight or walk straight anymore that that you would find in Jesus' church the shepherd clean you up, set you up straight again. How long has it been since you were at a church service and you felt like Barak the sheep finally getting to the animal rescue farm? Maybe maybe you were frustrated because it's been a long time. Maybe you feel like it's hardly ever that, that you come to church and, and you can finally see <laughs> Or, or, you, or you feel like, like that burden was taken off of your soul and now you can finally walk tall again through your life. Or maybe you feel like it's hardly ever that you come into church and, and you're changed like that. But most of the time you come and you leave and you feel like your fears were not addressed and your lonesomeness was not consoled. You just kind of feel maybe even a little emptier than when you started. Or maybe on the other side, you don't really care about all that. You figure as long as you show up and you say your amens when you're supposed to, well, then church did just what it was supposed to do for you. I don't know, whatever church has been doing for you or been failing to do for you, clearly we need to raise our expectations of what God wants, 
to do for us through his church. Because God wants for, for it to be like the animal rescue farm for us. That we come and through his church, he cleans us all up and gets us strong and confident again. Surrounds us with little sheep friends and we are all good to go like we hadn't been for a long time. This is what God wants to do for us through his church. Every week he has something ready for us to hear that is just what we need to get us on the right path again. And this is what we should be expecting of him, not just hearing a man's words, but God's words. Not just some guy in a white gown, but, but somebody God picked out to shepherd us again. And we raise our expectations like that, that's going to help the preacher. <laughs> That's going to help that shepherd guy God puts up in front of the church. Well, whenever you're a public speaker, if your audience is hanging on your every word, like it's the difference between life and death, that, that tends to make you a better speaker no matter what you're speaking about. And if you've got a flock of sheep that are just eager, eager to be led by a shepherd, that could maybe make about anybody into a pretty good shepherd. But having a higher expectations for what God wants to do for us through his church is also going to help all of us to be better hearers, to be better sheep. <laughs> because we're going to be listening like we're listening to God himself and, and ready. Okay, God, what are you going to snip away today? What old chunk of wool are you going to finally shave off of me today? Let's go. Let's do this. I'm so glad to finally be in your presence again. We're going to be listening with ears of faith. And the third thing, having more high, high expectations of what God wants to do for us through church is going to help us raise other people's expectations. Because Jesus wants us to be able to talk to other people about our church and say, I love my church because I get shepherded there. What? <laughs> People are probably going to say, what are you talking about? What do you mean? And then you say, yeah, every week I feel like the lost sheep that finally gets found. Jesus wants us to be able to talk that way to other people so that we can invite them to come in. The lost, the stray, the beaten down, the burdened, who can hardly see, can hardly walk. You come here too. You come in. This is just the place you need to be. They help me here. They're going to help you here too. This is what Jesus wants us to be able to say. But, but maybe here's the biggest thing of all to notice about Mark chapter 6, verse 34, and that is we come to church not just expecting to be changed, but expecting compassion. When Jesus saw that big crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus didn't react with anger, with disappointment. Why did you let yourself get into such bad shape? What's your problem? No, Jesus reacted with compassion. And that's what we can expect Jesus to show us through his church. Every week you can come in here. You can come in here so lost, right? So far astray. It's like you haven't heard the shepherd's voice for five years. You can come in here so spiritually chewed up by sin. It's like, look what the wolf dragged in. You can come in here so bedraggled, so burdened, like you're covered with five years of wool crusted on and matted down and filthy and full of branches and everything. And Jesus, his heart will go out to you. You'll feel great compassion for you. 
And he will have known that you were coming. And he has words picked out just for you because he knows what you need to hear. And his heart so much desires for you to hear it. You are not alone. And his heart so much desires for you to believe it. You're not alone anymore. Here I am, the good shepherd who laid down his life for you. And by God's grace upon us, by God's grace upon the shepherd up in the front of the church and the sheep all in the pews, by God's grace upon us as, as we find that compassion of Jesus week after week in his church, then we're going to know how to be like the sheep in the blue walker. I want to just show you the first 52 seconds or so of that video and look for the sheep in the blue walker. All right, we've got to switch some cords around and then we're ready to go. All right, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> we could each be the sheep in the blue walker. And we're, we're shuffling up to the scrappy looking, right, the scruffy ones, and we're, we're kind of scooting our way over to, to the strays and letting them know you come to the right place because you're going to find a shepherd here and he's going to take care of you and clean you up. That, that, that God would use each of us to reach out to some frightened soul and bring them through these doors and maybe not put your nose all over them but say to them, yes, so glad you're here. That's where I need to be too. And maybe you show them some of your wounds and some of your scars. But just mostly let them know it's a great place because the shepherd is here. Amen? Amen? The peace of God which goes beyond understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand and we speak our faith a little bit together with the Nicene Creed, pages 8 and 9 of your program. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. One more time, can I point you to that connection card that's in your program and invite everyone to grab the pen you were given, fill that out, especially looking at the back, you're going to see some next steps on there that really tie in to the message that God had for us today. I encourage you to uh, mark that up and fold it in half, throw it in the offering bag as we collect the offering. If you didn't bring an offering and you'd like to support our ministry, you can do that through your phone. There's an 833 toll-free number on the bottom of page 9 and the instructions there for how to give. Thank you so much.
Please stand and join me before the throne of God. Dear Shepherd of young and old, taking the tenderest lambs into your arms, we pray that you would guide us, guide your church here and throughout the world in your love and truth through the devious ways of life. Be our shepherd and our pride, our staff and our song. Let our congregation be a place where straying sheep find that you have never left them, where weary souls week after week are taken up in their shepherd's arms, or even the worst of sinners discover a Savior who has died also for them, a love that found them even when they weren't looking for it. We pray that you would use our sermons, services, classrooms, and ministries week after week to strengthen your sheep. Pour out your spirit and your word upon us. When our hearts would be wayward, keep us in the narrow way. Supply us grace in our every time of need while we live and also when we die. All this we ask in the name of our good shepherd, Jesus. And we pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always.
please be seated. We have some tape markings on the floor, so if you're not with your own family, you can get some idea of a little bit of the distance to keep between you and others at the rail for our, our COVID-19 precautions. We also have a prepackaged wafer and wine on the, the uh, golden stand there. You can grab that if you like on your way up, if you prefer that to the traditional wafer and the wine. God bless you for taking in the supper.
Please stand saying blessed assurance. people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Do good to all people and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Welcome to Stay Standing for the Closing Hymn. Wonderful to be with you this morning. Bible class will begin shortly in the cafeteria. We'll have church again at 9 next Sunday until further notice. 9 o'clock every Sunday. And two Sundays from today, we will meet after church, Lord willing, uh, to begin the process of trying to call a seventh grade teacher. We have a number of our faculty covering that vacancy this year. Uh, but uh, two Sundays from today, we'll ask the Lord's guidance to try and meet that need permanently of a seventh grade teacher. Anything else, Mr. Mark? Mark? Love you. Glad you were here. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good.